Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Those who love selfies will go crazy over this quadcopter. Senator John McCain says no to Russian rocket motors. Vintage aircraft to get to show off at Air Venture this year. I'm Brie Cross, it is May 18th, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It appears that the ultimate selfie camera has been invented. A company has introduced a camera on a quadcopter platform it says is the world's first, quote, throw and shoot device. Called Lily, the quadcopter will follow a person wearing a GPS tracking device and automatically focus its camera on the person wearing it and shoot HD stills or videos. The device and its carrying case are both waterproof, allowing operations under wet conditions. According to the company's website, the battery will allow the aircraft to fly for up to 20 minutes at speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. The maximum distance from the user is about 100 feet and the maximum altitude is 50 feet. If the battery runs low, it will smoothly land itself before the battery is exhausted. Now when you want to have your own personal watch this moment, you don't need anyone else around to record the event. Shipments are expected to begin in February of next year. When defense and intelligence officials in Washington, D.C. said that they needed to continue to purchase Russian-built RD-180 rocket engines for the use by United Launch Alliance, U.S. Senator John McCain, chair of the Senate Armed Services Committee, had a simple answer, which was no. It is reported that in a letter to Senator John McCain, the Defense Secretary and Director of National Intelligence, urged the Senator to amend a law that would, in their words, assure the Pentagon access to space. Many lawmakers would like to see the purchase of the Russian rocket cores by ULA ended, but federal law requires that two military satellite launch vehicles be ready at all times, and ULA Russian engine-powered rockets are the only rockets rated for that purpose. Waiting in the wings is SpaceX, which hopes to compete with ULA for the launch business. The Air Force says it could certify SpaceX to compete for some military and spy satellite business by June of this year. McCain pointed out that NASA is not prevented from using the Russian engines and could launch a military satellite if the need became critical. After the break, vintage aircraft display area improved for Air Venture 2015. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX-100, and ATX-100G transceivers are the next-gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. One of the enjoyable pastimes at EAA Air Venture is to just walk around and look at your favorite kinds of aircraft. This year, those who enjoy scoping out the vintage aircraft will enjoy a better atmosphere and experience a better way to see some of the rare, legendary aircraft of the past century. The Vintage Aircraft Association has commenced a major expansion of its Red Barn headquarters and Vintage Plaza Complex for this year's fly-in. The Vintage Enhancement Project is highlighted by an expansion of the Vintage Interview Circle, where award-winning aircraft are brought each day during Air Venture. Live interviews with the owners, pilots, and mechanics bring life to each aircraft story. The project is made possible through a gift from Mert Strong Rose of South Barrington, Illinois, who committed support to create a new plaza in the Vintage area in honor of her late husband. VAA President Jeff Robinson said, quote, 
The project will also reduce vehicle congestion in the vintage Red Barn area, which will enhance pedestrian safety and convenience." End quote. Each week we share with you an online video that one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off of that we 10 miles for two and a half hours play time. If you are a soldier on the ground needing airborne support, nothing can look more beautiful than the A-10 Thunderbolt II, despite its not-so-beautiful nickname of the Warthog. This video shows just what this amazing aircraft can do. Search Close Air Support on YouTube. After these messages, in case you haven't heard, UAVs are not allowed in D.C. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare www.aviationmodificationleaders.com Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Just a day after the FAA issued a reminder that Washington, D.C. is a no-fly zone for UAVs, the Secret Service detained a UAV operator. An eyewitness said that he was trying to fly a UAV over the White House fence. Frontier Airlines CEO Dave Siegel has stepped down from the post as customer complaints have continued to rise at the ultra-low-cost carrier. It is reported that the carrier had multiple operational issues that arose as the carrier transformed into a low-fare airline. Judicial Watch says it obtained records from the TSA of alleged sexually related assaults on passengers by TSA personnel at three major U.S. international airports. The documents describe incidents at Denver, Los Angeles, and Chicago O'Hare airports. NASA and the Silicon Valley chapter of the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems International joined to co-sponsor the 2015 Unmanned Aerial Systems Traffic Management Convention. It is set for July 28th through 30th at NASA's Ames Research Center in Moffett Field, California. NASA plans a second test of its low-density supersonic decelerator early next month. While traveling at Mach 3, the test vehicle's inner tube-shaped decelerator, called a supersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator, will inflate and slow the vehicle to allow parachute deployment. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. About a year ago, Glass Air let us know that they were planning to make the Technified 2.0 liter diesel available on their popular Sportsman kit-built airplane. Now it is reported that a diesel Sportsman has rolled out of the door following the successful completion of their two weeks to taxi program. The two weeks to taxi program takes place at Glass Air's customer assembly center and allows the builder to completely assemble a sportsman in a highly educational and recreational setting. By the end of two weeks, the airplane is ready to make the first taxi test. According to the Glass Air blog, this is exactly what happened earlier this month when Martin Peterson completed his sportsman, and it is also the first diesel sportsman to be built in the two-week program. It is reported the build went smoothly and Peterson was able to rev up his CD-155 diesel engine and taxi his sportsman as advertised at the end of two weeks. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday. 
with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful Monday.